Hey guys, welcome to our Thursday Night Live. I'm excited to be talking about this topic tonight and we're doing it again with Instagram and Facebook and God guys, I'm so excited. I've been dancing to that song for a while now and I'm super pumped about talking about poop, pooping and the whole topic of poop talk and the stigma around this topic. So, I mean, whether we're calling it poop or caca or doo-doo or shit or bowel movements, BMs, number twos, crap, turd, I don't care what you're calling it, the fact is is that so many people are grossed out by this topic. And I want to talk to you tonight about why you need to give a shit about this topic and how we need to bust through the stigma around this conversation. So here's the thing. I suspect that you might be feeling a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of someone knowing that you're pooping, someone smelling that you pooped, <laughs> someone hearing that you're pooping, or even the worst when you go into the bathroom and you know you gotta go number two and you know that there's people out there that know you're in the bathroom and you're just like worried that they're like keeping track of time right <laughs> that they're gonna know that um that was definitely not a pee because you took a little bit longer or you clearly got lost in the bathroom right so i think that there's so many of us that have these fears but here is the reality everyone poops everyone including you and you everyone's pooping and me right so why are we so darn touchy about this subject? Well, the truth is, is that there are so many different reasons why we're uncomfortable about poop talk. And so tonight we're gonna to talk about some of those reasons. So one of the first things that is alive and well is poop humor. And let's be honest, like who doesn't love a good poop joke, right? Who has been guilty of, you know, saying a poop joke? right? I think we've all done it before. I think we've all engaged in it. I think we've all been in company of people who are laying out the poop jokes and you have probably been one of the people that have nervously, awkwardly laughed at it and went, oh my god, thank god that, you know, I wasn't the butt of that joke, <laughs> right? And we nervously laugh it off and like, okay, switch subjects, right? So we get super uncomfortable about it. But poop humor is definitely alive and well. And you know, I will never forget growing up, my uncle Rick, we'd go and visit him. And this was like, I remember the first time he played this one on me and I fell for it hook, line and sinker. So he had this whole thing. He'd come up, he'd be like, hey, Lissa, pull my finger. And I'll never forget, I pulled it, I fell for it. And he let her rip. He just let her rip, he just, he made the biggest fart I think I've ever heard. <laughs> and I was mortified. I was super embarrassed on his behalf. I was uncomfortable. And, you know, I wasn't really raised in a home that had a lot of humor or fairly, you know, straight faced type people. Uh, so I'm not sure what happened to my face because I'm not really straight faced at all anymore. And so, you know, I wasn't really used to joking around or humor and, you know, he just totally told me to pull his finger and then he fart like really close to me and it was weird. And I was young and that was sort of like one of my first introductions to this whole like butt topic. like bum stuff, right? <laughs> so let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, raise your hand or give me a heck yes or hell yes if you are super uncomfortable talking about poop or if the whole poop topic is like just not your jam. Okay, be like, yep, that's me. Now, if you are super comfortable talking about poop, I wanna hear from you too, and give me a poop emoji, okay? If you love talking about poop, like me, then I want you to give me a poop emoji in the comments below. All right, hey, Mr. Mora just joined us over on Instagram, gave a wave, a hands up, he's like, yeah, poop. <laughs> Doesn't count, he's my partner, I make him talk about poop all the time. <laughs> okay, so Marjo said, what's brown and crawls up your leg? A homesick turd. <laughs> that 
is awesome. That is awesome. Okay, so see, poop humor is alive and well. If you guys have a poop joke, then lay it on me. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. And we might just have to, for the record, when I first came on, I am not sure if many of you saw, but I was I was dancing to Push It by Salt and Peppa. Here we go. I think we need a little bit more of that. I'm quite convinced that this song was written all about poop. That's right, just listen. Wait for it, it's coming, it's coming. Almost there. I'm gonna be talking about Push It. You've all heard this song before, right? Who's dancing with me at home? <laughs> Push it. Push it. Right? Am I right? So here's the thing. That makes people super uncomfortable. I'm breaking a sweat just talking about this topic, right? Because guys, this is, this is, we need to have, you know, some lighthearted humor when we're approaching this topic because it doesn't need to be so straight face serious, right? So anyways, back to poop humor, right? Again, I'm pretty sure that song was written about poop. Just saying. All right. So here's the problem is that poop humor, there's nothing wrong with poop humor, but this is one of the reasons why there's so much stigma around poop conversation because it's often in some lighthearted conversation, right? There, It's always, you know, a joke. It's always um, laughing it off and it's typically men that are, you know, saying the joke or playing the joke or whatever, right? So here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with poop humor. Nothing wrong with it. We can all have a good laugh. We can be crazy like I am and dance to push it <laughs> and pretend it's about poop. There's nothing wrong with poop humor. Here's where the problem is, is when poop humor is where the conversation ends. So when we are, you know, joking about shit and poops and turds and caca and doo-doo and all that stuff, and then that is the only conversation we're having about poop. So that's where the problem is. And you know, it really has over the years escalated beyond just poop humor because on a societal level, there is a lot of, I'm not even going to say conversation, I think it's just beliefs that have been downloaded in us. And um, again, it's not like people are telling us, you know, you should have poop shame, but it definitely exists because of, um, I'm not going to blame it on Hollywood, but there's, you know, that whole environment and then lack of conversation. And then there is conversation happening around or jokingly happening around, um, you know, ladies don't poop, for example. Well, let me tell you, I poop. I poop every day, two to three times a day, in fact, just in case you were wondering, right? So this whole thing of like, ladies don't poop, um, or like, ladies don't sweat, they glow, <laughs> right? As I'm sweating, I'm actually glowing, <laughs> right? So um, this is another one, right? Or what about um, like, ladies don't fart? Done. We've all done it, okay? I will be the butt of the joke to break through the stigma of this conversation because we've got to have the conversation, guys. Um, what about, um, what's another one? Yeah, ladies don't sweat, ladies don't smell. We smell like flowers or like shitty perfume. Let's be real, right? We are human and poop it, it is not gendered. It, it has nothing to do with gender, right? I will just say right here though, that it's not just about women because don't think for a second that only women are affected by this. It's men too. Men absolutely feel poop shame too. Um, and so one of the problems becomes that there's this anxiety around these types of conversations because we jokingly say like, oh, you know, women don't poop, or at least we like to think so, right? We think that, oh, you know, women don't poop. We kind of laugh it off, right? But then unconsciously or even consciously, I should say, quietly in our minds, we're like, is that true? Like, do women really not poop? And we start to wonder, like, it starts this dialogue, or like, women don't sweat, or women don't fart. Well, heck, like, 
can you imagine the level of anxiety that really comes from that? Because now you're in a relationship with your, your boyfriend or even husband eventually, and you don't feel comfortable pooping in front of them. Okay. Or you don't feel comfortable farting in front of them. So you hold this stuff in, you hold the shit in like that can't be good guys. It's not good. It's causing you digestive problems. And so this embarrassment of gas and pooping and again, whether it's male or female, there's this shame in this bodily function because of these messages that are being sent through society. And then there's a light humor that's added to it. So it's like, well, are they joking or are they not joking? Like, is there a bit of truth in that or is it not true? And so this is a really toxic way to talk about poop. And in my experience, when I was trying to fix my gut and working with IBS, I used to fluctuate between diarrhea and constipation. And one of the problems that really arose from that was that I didn't really realize that it wasn't normal. And that might seem crazy to you guys, but I didn't because no one was talking about poop around me. Like it wasn't like, you know, I was pulling up a chair with a bunch of my friends and be like, yo, like how many times are you pooping today? Is it like soft? Is it hard? Um, any pellet poops going on? How about like oatmeal texture or like gravy? The gravy texture is bad, right? Like no one's talking about this stuff. No one's talking about it and we need to be talking about it. And so I really felt alone. I felt lost. I was like, mm, is, is this normal? Or like, I don't know. Another thing that we hear through society is um, as we get older, these things happen. You're meant to feel like shit as you get older because it's just age, right? Aging isn't meant to look pretty. You're meant to experience symptoms as you age. Well, I'm choosing not to believe in that, right? I'm choosing to trust that my body's trying to tell me that there is something going on, that it needs support. And so when we don't have conversation around this topic, it really just further adds to the shame and guilt and stigma that is around poop. Okay. So here's why you absolutely need to give a shit about this conversation and give a shit about your poop and what's landing in the toilet. And you should be looking at it and you should be talking about it. And heck, you can take a picture of it. I don't care. I've had clients send me pictures of their poop before and I'm not grossed out by it. It's like, cool. That's cool. Looks like it. That's, that's the poster child for poop. Make sure you keep that picture and use it as a reference. Right? So we want to understand why it's so important that we break through the stigma. So here's what typically happens. Because there's so much shame and guilt around the conversation, usually what I hear so many clients tell me is they're embarrassed to go to the bathroom or they're flat out grossed out to use a public toilet, for example. So they avoid eating and drinking. Okay. And so they restrict their food and drink so that they actually limit their bowel movement or they change the foods that they're eating to try to manipulate the bowel movement that they have to prevent them from being embarrassed. Has anyone done that before? Can you just let me know in the comments? Say, yes, that's me. Um, and again, you might feel uncomfortable sharing, but I'm going to encourage you to share and have this conversation. And again, I'll be the first one to voluntarily tell you uh, where I was at. So yeah, absolutely. I used to avoid uh, food and drink, especially when I was dating. Let's just be real. It was like the last thing I wanted to have to deal with of like, um, so I just have to go to the bathroom again. He'd be like, what the hell is going on? Right? <laughs> or maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he's totally cool with it, but there's again, so much shame and guilt that we just, we never want to test the waters, right? So restricting food and drink, that's a problem. Here's the other problem that happens is I've had so many clients tell me that they just hold it. They're, they're out in public at this point, or they're at someone's house, some friend's house, or they have family over, or they're at work. I got a story about that. They're at work. Okay. And they have to go so badly, but they are too scared to go that they hold it. They're like, nope, not happening right now. I am waiting until I get home in my safe toilet, in my bathroom, when no one knows I'm pooping, no one smells my poop, and no one's timing me, right? 
So this is, you know, again, another reality that comes from the shame and stigma around poop. So I'll never forget, I used to work with my uh, parents' family business before becoming a nutritionist um, and kind of in between when I decided I didn't want to be a singer anymore. And so while I was in school, I worked for the family biz. And um, at one of the locations that I worked at, there was the main offices that had like all of our desks. And there was probably three or four of us in this area at a time, but definitely always two other people and myself. So always three people at a time. I was like never alone in this area. And of course, the toilets, the bathroom, was like right off of this office area. And it was the worst. This was right in the dead of when I was experiencing my IBS and eating shitty foods, i.e. chicken burgers and large fry with buffalo ranch sauce and a, a big Coke for lunch, <laughs> right? So I'd be eating this fast food every day. Once in a while, I'd switch it up and go for a schnitzel from one of the local restaurants in, in my hometown. But what would happen was I'd come back and not too long after lunch, I'd have the shits. And that was, um, you know, super hard to deal with because it was like, do I use the customer washrooms, like office washrooms here, or do I go back into the men's change room and men's washroom where the mechanics are using that washroom and hope, hope to God no one's in there, but I know it's like disgusting in there, right? So, you know, it was the worst. And here's some of the things that would go through my mind. Maybe I can run the tap. Maybe I'll just pretend that I'm in here washing my hands. <laughs> and I'll run the tap and that will just maybe like mask the sound of me pooping. <laughs> you know, then I'd start worrying about, I need to poop really quickly, like I need to get this done fast so that they think it's just a pee. And so what would happen, it would be like, okay, I'm gonna like partly hold it, but partly try and let it out so that it wouldn't really make too much sound and you know, wouldn't plop in the water. And like, this is crazy making, this is crazy thinking. No one can live this way. So please let me know in the comments if this is you and maybe you're not comfortable sharing again. Maybe, you know, if you feel more comfortable, private message me and say, I, you're, not, you're not alone, Alyssa, you're not crazy. I too, you know, have done these things. But this whole work environment created so much anxiety for me. And, um, you know, I'm really happy now that I pooped regularly and health, health, healthfully that that's not an issue, but I also don't care anymore. Um, and so, you know, the bathroom is a safe space and I want it to become a safe space for you guys, not a stressful visit to the John. Okay. So here's what happens when we get to a point where we are avoiding food and drink, we are holding it and perhaps even, um, avoiding going at out or sorry, avoiding going at all. We start to avoid going out because we're not sure where the closest toilet is, right? So we, you know, miss out on social events or we say we're going to go to something, but then we're like, N -n -n -n, I'm not feeling good today. Sorry, can't make it. Like I actually double booked myself, got these other plans like, oh, family emergency can't come. Right. So we miss out on social events and this really starts to leave you feeling like you have zero control over your life. You feel super frustrated. And again, there's no one to talk to about it. So the anxiety around poop grows, the anxiety around this conversation grows and the stigma grows. So again, why you need to give a shit about this conversation is even if you think your poops are bang on, which rarely, rarely that's the case for people in my experience, but even if your poops, even if you're one of the rare people that has their shit together, <laughs> okay, here's why you need to give a shit. Even if they're good, your bowels are telling you so much, your poop is telling you so much about what's actually going on within your body. And when you get to these circumstances where you're, again, avoiding foods, holding it, um, or just shitting your pants altogether, or, or not, you've gotten to the point where you're so constipated, it actually affects the body because now you are not properly eliminating the toxins out of your body. And that excess toxic load happening within the body creates other issues. It gives you brain fog. It gives you memory issues. You feel stiff and sore. You are inflamed. And that is just the bare minimum 
that's not even touching on the digestive issues, heart issues, hormone issues that will come from holding it in, in, or whatever, all the things that we've talked about, all the things that you're doing to manipulate your bowel movements, right? But the other thing is that this is just stressful, right? It's just flat out anxiety provoking and stressful. And studies have shown that, uh-oh, there we go, had a slight delay on Instagram. Studies have shown that when you're stressed or when you're anxious, it actually affects the motility of your bowels. In other words, you can create diarrhea or constipation just from having stress and anxiety. Well, if you are stressing about this whole poop topic and you're trying to manipulate where you're going and when you're going and avoiding bathrooms and all that crazy making stuff that we I've done too, I have done too, you are further creating digestive issues, okay? Again, it can cause diarrhea or constipation. It affects the motility or the, the actual muscle movement or peristalsis of the colon. So that is huge, guys. Now, the other thing is that that stress depletes your enzymes. It depletes your good bacteria. It causes leaky gut, and it actually dries up the mucosal lining of your gut. So if you're getting that raw, gut-wrenching pain, your, your mucus lining of your gut could be affected, right? It might not be where we need it to be. So here's the thing is that this is, again, such an important topic and we can be lighthearted about it. We can have, you know, poop humor, but when the conversation stops there and we are left wondering if we're really not meant to be smelly or that it's bad if we smell or, you know, we're not, you know, women or ladies aren't meant to poop, um, these sorts of things are toxic. And so what's really happened is that we haven't developed A, the understanding B, the language or terminology and therefore the maturity to be able to actually have real conversation about this poop thing. So that's why I get so passionate about we need to raise our understanding of why your shit matters, okay? And then we need to make sure that we're actively talking about it. I'm not saying that you need to like you know, go out in public and be like, hey stranger, my name's Alyssa, how's your poop looking, right? But let there not be fear, right? Let there not be shame. Let's bring some understanding so that we can be, become more intelligent on the, on the conversation, around the conversation, and share, you know, really great mature um, conversation around it in the interest of your health. Does that make sense? Is everyone with me on here? Or is everyone like hiding behind the camera like, this chick, that's great, she's arrived, she's comfortable with her poop, but I am not comfortable with my poop just yet, <laughs> right? So if you need to, private message me, we can have this conversation. But if, again, you're one of those people and you're like, poop, let's talk about it, then put a poop emoji in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. So guys, we need to normalize the conversation, and when we don't normalize the conversation, then we're really just creating more stigma, more pain, more shame for those who are suffering from um, any sort of inflammatory bowel, irritable bowel, um, or digestive issues. So let's just raise our, raise our intelligence, raise our understanding, raise our maturity on the topic, and let's start talking about poop, because it matters to your health. So I hope this was helpful, guys. We will continue the poop conversation forevermore because I'm the poop queen is what at least people my clients are telling me. <laughs> and we will see you next week. I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.